In the next two videos, we'll work through another example using the metric equation. And this example will involve a real physical experiment. Um, sometimes special relativity can seem like science fiction. They're alien ships traveling around at significant fractions of the speed of light, and in this course they're stuffed animals all the time. But um, it's useful to remember that special relativity is not science fiction, it's actual science. And there's experiments that back up this science, and that's what this example will be about. Our starting point is going to be to think about a type of elementary particle called a muon. So a muon, M-U-O-N, is um, very similar to an electron. It's like a beefy version of an electron. So muons are 270, uh, excuse me, 207 times more massive than an electron. But like an electron, they have um, an electric charge of minus one. Um, so maybe you haven't heard of muons and you're wondering why? How come nobody's told me about these? Well, the answer probably is that um, muons don't last very long. They're quite unstable. The half-life of a muon is about one and a half microseconds. So um, that's 1.5 times 10 to the minus six. So if you had a thousand muons in your hand, um, 1.6 microseconds later, on average, you would have half of that around 500 muons in your hand. So they decay very quickly. So they're not really part of the sort of everyday material world. Um, how, how might we encounter muons? Well, you can make them in a particle accelerator. And so those are devices that physicists create where they accelerate electrons or other things to very, very high speeds and energies and then smash them into each other and other things. And in the subatomic debris from those collisions, you'll often get muons. But we're gonna consider muons from a different source and that's from cosmic rays. So cosmic rays are very high energy photons that are zipping around through the universe. Many of the cosmic rays, probably most of the cosmic rays that hit Earth uh, were generated in the sun. Um, so these are very high energy photons. Some of them might have been generated um, by other stars um, and they have just been zipping around through the galaxy universe for a long time. So one of these high energy photons, and a photon is just a, a, the quantum of light, um, one of these high energy photons hits the upper atmosphere of the Earth, collides with an air molecule or something, and then at the subatomic level um, there's a very violent energetic um, collision, because this photon's coming in with a ton of energy, and it creates a whole bunch of stuff, including very often muons. So you get muons created in the upper atmosphere, and because they have a lot of energy coming from this energetic cosmic ray, they're heading down towards us, us at a significant fraction of the speed of light. So those are the muons that we're going to consider using the metric equation and uh, working through this experiment. Um, but before we do that, I want to say a little bit more about half-lives. So the half-life is defined to be at the time required for quantity to reduce by half. And the context that this comes up is exponential decay. And that's a situation where something is decaying with a constant probability per unit time. And that will lead to an exponential decay like this. So maybe there's a, a certain probability per minute or per day that um, an object breaks or decays. Um, the amount of that object left is going to follow this decaying exponential. So n is the amount and t is time. So let's just work through a, a quick numerical example. Um, you'll see how this goes. So let's say that the half-life happens to be three days. The T half for half-life. And that the initial amount of whatever this is in this example is 1,000. All right, so let's um, use this idea of half-life to figure out how much we have at later times. So when T equals three, three days. So that's one half-life from the starting point. So um, this quantity will have been a half. 
you would take a thousand, multiply it by a half, and we would get 500. What about three days later? So six days total. Well, six days is two half-lives. So that means a thousand would be halved and halved again. Multiply by a half, multiply by a half. A half times a half is a half squared. So that would be uh, a half times a half is a quarter. 1,000 over 4 is 250. So we could figure out the amount at day 9 and 12 every time we would just multiple, multiply this again by a half. Um, what if, though, if we wanted to know um, a day that wasn't a multiple of 3? The trick then is we would need to kind of like we've been doing all along, express that time as a multiple, um, might not be an integer multiple, of the half-life. So let me write a formula for that. Uh, and this is a general formula for exponential decay, expressed in terms of half-life. So n naught is the original amount, and t is the amount uh, at some time t later. And that's going to equal this, a half raised to the t over the t, uh, sorry, raised to this, t over t half. So this is actually what we're doing in our heads, even though you may not have seen this formula in your mind as you were doing this. So if t is 6, well, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So this quantity here is 2. We have a half squared, aha, 250. That's just what we did. So let me do one more example. Suppose I want to know... Well, what's the value, uh, what's the amount of n at um, 5 days? Well, I could use this formula. n of 5 is n naught, that's 1,000, times a half, then t over the half-life. t is 5. And the half-life is 3. So, this would be 1,000 times a half to the 5 thirds power. So let's see. That I'll need a calculator to do. I've got a half, 0.5. I'm going to raise it to 5 thirds. Ah, 0.315-ish multiply by a thousand and I get 314.98 let's call that 315 so that makes sense um, we'd expect a number for five days in between the three and the six day amount and indeed that's what we get you might want to check just to make sure that you know how to um, do this on your calculator um, you might want to check that you get the same result that I do so following this um, video, there's a short quiz, and I'd recommend doing it even if this is very familiar to you, um, because you'll be calculating some numbers that I'm going to refer to in the next video when we start talking about muons and this muon experiment.